Hello and welcome to this tutorial about the new event system in Wildlife. In this tutorial I'll show you what this new event system is, how to use it and I'll show you some examples. So what is an event? An event is a command that can be sent out by your props and be received by different props to build functionality to your scene. Each event can carry a parameter which can provide the receiving prop with additional information. Let me give you an example. Let's open the sandbox editor using tab. You have this new automation tab. Let's add a button and let's add a light. Now when I click this button you'll see a new drop down called events. Let me open this. You'll see event receivers and dispatchers. The receivers are the ones that receive the events and the dispatchers are the ones that send events. So in this case we'll want to add an event to on button down. Let's call it set light visibility and set the parameter to true because we want it to be visible. And as soon as the button goes in the, into the up state again, let's add this again. You can also use this drop down to see all of the events that you used and set it to false. Now we want the light to receive these events we just set up in the button. So let's hit, click on the light, scroll to its events and in the set visibility, let's add an event and use the one we already used here. And as you can see, it automatically created a link between these two props, showing the direction of the execution. Now let's head back into play mode. You can see the button is interactable. Let's hit E. And as soon as the button goes up, the light will turn off. And if you press it, it'll turn on and off again. If you want to delete an event, just hit the X button. Or if you have multiple events, you can reorder them by dragging this icon at the front. You can reorder events to change the execution order of the dispatchers, meaning the top event will fire before the next ones. You can also test your events in edit mode using the test events button, which will do the same as interacting with it in the world. Now let me go over all of the automation props we have because there's quite a lot of them. I'll use the showcase event map that has been bundled with this build. You'll find it in the features tab. Just open that up and we'll see our showcase facility with all of the events inside of it. Now let's enter the facility. The doors will automatically open and we'll see our first prop that you already saw, the button. The button has two dispatches, the button down and button up, as we discussed before, and the set visibility and the set option value event. This is a complicated one, I'll talk about that later. The button has multiple settings. It has how long the button will stay down when you interact with it. You can also just hide it and build your own prop onto it to make it look however you want it to look. And it can have a name. The next prop is the lever. It's almost the same as the button. It just keeps its state when you flick it, meaning you can flick it one way and it'll stay that way until you flick it back. Trigger zones can detect if the player enters them or exits them and execute an event based on that. In this example, as soon as you hit the trigger zone, you get pushed back and are denied the loot. Event functions are used to clean up your code. They basically just have a run event and as soon as this gets received, it'll execute all the event dispatches you set in the events dispatcher. This is just useful for, um, for example, if you have a game and you want to reset the game, you just have to execute one event and this will reset all of the values that you set. The delay prop can dispatch an event with a specified time offset. Here you can see this, it has a delay of 0.75 seconds, which turns on this light exactly 0.75 seconds later. The random node has an execution chance which ranges from 0 to 1, 0 meaning it'll always fail, 1 meaning it'll always succeed. And depending if it succeeds or fails, you can dispatch different events. The toggle prop can be in one of two states, either on or off. It has an event receiver for toggling its state, just to the opposite it is currently, and it has one to set its state, where you can use true or false in the parameter. As you can see, I'm toggling the light visibility with a button. The variable prop can hold a value that you might use later. It has a change value receiver, which sets the value. It has a get value receiver, which just executes on value get executed. 
That's in case you don't want to change it, but you want uh, to get its value at the moment. And it'll, it has a on value changed event, which always gets executed when the value is changed in any way, either by the event or if you change the value manually. The event loop can dispatch an event in a fixed interval. You can start and stop the loop using these two um, event receivers or set the interval with this receiver. In this case, the second interval is set to 0.5 seconds. So if I start the loop, you can see the lights are alternating every 0.5 seconds. The condition prop is slightly more complicated. It has a condition type, checking A and B, which are these two values. It has a set value A, set value B, and then a, another variant which automatically calls the run function. And it'll use this operation on these two values. For example, equals true equals true. That would return true, calling the on condition true dispatcher. If it wasn't the same, if this was false or anything else, it would return false or dispatch the um, event false. The operation prop works similarly, except it doesn't check a condition. It um, executes an operation. Here, all of the mathematical operations you could know and some that you might not know. Um, it also has value A and B. You can set value A and B via events. You can again set value A and run or B and run. And the dispatcher will contain the result as a parameter when you bind it. The text combiner prop is quite simple. You give it two strings, string A and B, which you can set via events again, and it'll just glue them together and dispatch um, the glue together string. So for example, if you have one to three and lol, it'll return one to three lol as soon as you combine the strings. The transformer node is quite useful. It can be used to move, rotate and scale an object from one position or rotation scale to another. In this example, if I hit move to end, which is B, it'll move to its end, which has rotation, location and scale in it. Or I can go back to its initial state. But if we click on it, you can see there's, a, there's more UI. You can set the current position as a start, which it is already. But if I move it over here, rotate it a bit, scale it, something like this, say set current as end, and then go back to the start, then it'll do exactly this. The transform prop has a lot of events. It has a move to start, which moves to the start location, rotation and scale. Move to end, which goes to the end. Set to start, which immediately snaps to the start with uh, ignoring the travel time. And the same for end. And stop just stops it right where it is. It also has event dispatches as soon as it um, reached its start point or end point in case you want to do something after that. The random number node will return a number between the range min and range max as soon as run is uh, received and will output its um, resulting random number in the event dispatcher on random number generated. As an example, I connected the random node to the set text of the speech bubble. And if I hit the run event, I'll get a random number between zero and 100. Or I could tell it to only give me whole numbers and it'll just give me integers. The sign movement prop doesn't have much to do with the event system, but it can be used to create an oscillating movement for location, rotation or scale of an object or for all objects that are um, children of this uh, object. Um, for example, let me um, have a location multiplier that just multiplies the sine wave by 100 on the z-axis, for example, uh, and then go back to in-game. You can see this cube will oscillate up and down by a meter. This only works in uh, play mode so that it's not annoying to try to select it in edit mode. The edit mode prop is very simple. It detects whether you are in edit mode or not. This is simple for hiding stuff while you're in play mode, for example, that you need in edit mode. The environment manager has all to do with the sky. It can change the time, change the cloud coverage using the parameters can also change to a weather type, which now also can be set up here. And as you can see, I can change the time of day as well as the cloud coverage using events. The player management prop can be used to change the player's clothes. 
For example, you can change the entire outfit. You can also change the um, clothing slots independently. And you can also change whether the player should even wear clothes or not. In this example, I connected a random number um, prop to the player manager. And you can see every time I press this button, my outfit changes to a random one. The player follower prop can be used to attach um, this prop to the player and to any of its bones, for example, the head here. It can also follow smoothly or snap directly to the um, player. In this case, it's smooth. Let me uh, show. If you equip it, you can see it's lagging behind slightly. Alternatively, they can snap directly to you. This will never leave me now. The screen fade prop can be used to fade the screen to black and back. It has an event dispatcher as soon as uh, the screen is completely back and as soon as it's back to normal. You can also set up how long it takes to uh, fade to black and how long it takes to fade back to normal. And you use the fade out and in event to start this operation. The portal prop is used to teleport the player from one portal to another. Every portal has a name and a target name. So if we click on portal B, copy this, put it into the target here. As soon as we enter this portal, we will come out of the other side. And of course, we can also double link these. So if we set portal A as a target for portal B, we can bo go both ways. The portals also have event dispatches as soon as a player entered them or left them. I will briefly skip vector and color creator because these need a special explanation and I'll go to delta time. Delta time is a prop that um, has a dispatcher that gets executed every frame and uh, the parameter it gives you is the time since the last tick uh, or since the last time the game rendered a frame. This is useful for um, creating something that moves at a regular rate independent of frame rate for example. Now let's talk about the vector creator and color creator. They have to do with the set option value event. Every object has this and it's a bit more complicated. It has a huge tooltip you can read. Um, but basically it can be used to change any variable of this object. So if we want to change the uh, value of metallic we can. For example, if you use this test uh, field, if I put in metallic semicolon meaning uh, now I want to uh, write the value 0 0.5 and execute it. You can see it changes metallic value and it also updated the value here. And these are used to change um, vectors and colors. So here X, Y, Z for uh, vectors, which would be any um, option that has three fields and color for anything that it uses a color. You can set the red, blue, uh, green and alpha values. And in effect, it'll create this um, string for you. You have to use in the set option value because colors and vectors are more complicated. They have three values instead of one. They are just uh, there to make it easier for you to change the color of something if you want to. Let me give you an example. If I want to change the color of this cube, um, I already connected this to a sign showing what it outputs and this uh, which will receive it in its set option value. Now let's just make up a color. These values are all uh, range 0 to 1. So 0 meaning 0 red, for example. Let's say 0 0.5 red, 0 0.75 green and 0 0.2 um, blue. And we want to change it in the option called color. So we'll say color and option name. And as soon as I run this, you can see it t turns this color and this is what it creates as a string, which it sends over to this um, object. I hope I was able to help you. If you have any questions, suggestions or feedback, leave them in the comments below. Um, also check out this map if you want to delve deeper into how some of this stuff works. Hope you have a great day and thanks for watching. Bye.